Resin miniatures are becoming more and more common, and the first time you build one it can be a little bit confusing because there are some key things that are very important about this material that don't appear in others, for example with plastic miniatures. So in this video what we're going to be doing is running through all these details that you need to know, so this way you can work with the resin and get the best results from your miniature. So let's get to it. As we said in the intro, resin kits are becoming more and more common and popular as well, and when you're getting into the hobby you'll encounter them sooner or later, but first of all you'll be encountering plastic kits. So what we're going to do before we show you how to prepare a resin kit, I'm just going to quickly show you the difference between plastic and resin. And I've got a plastic frame here, most plastic kits will come on something like this, this is hard plastic. This is from Conquest, which is from Parabella Games, this is the Legionaries kit, and you can see what you've got is a frame with all the parts cast onto it, so great for lots and lots of troops, because you get loads of parts and something like that. Now a resin kit by comparison will come in a packet like well, this one here, where you can see all the parts are inside it, and they all look a bit jumbled at the bottom of it. Now don't worry about that, that's quite normal, all the parts are fine, but you can see it's not quite as laid out in the same way as a plastic sprue. Now why would you have resin miniatures? Well really the answer comes down to cost, because the plastic sprue, making something like that is very expensive, and it costs an absolute fortune to get it all set up. So generally you'll see that for rank and file, so that's where you're going to be buying more than one, and possibly some really popular characters as well, like Space Marine Captains and that sort of thing. Resin on the other hand is much more cost effective, so smaller studios will have lots of resin miniatures, also less popular characters will tend to be in resin for some of the bigger companies and things, so you'll tend to see them in smaller amounts like that, so you will encounter them sooner or later for your personalities most likely. Now when you open up the plastic kit what you'll find is all the components come on a block, so something like this. So this is again from that same kit, this is Knights of Dale from Middle Earth, so this is from Games Workshop, and you'll have this block which is not quite the same shape as a sprue, but forms a similar sort of function in that it's a bar that little part is connected onto it. Sometimes you'll have more than one piece on it, so for example here you've got a shield and spear, and you can see it's more like a sprue in this case because multiple parts are on it, but also sometimes you'll have information on these bars, so you see both are labelled B, so I know these parts all go together. Now what this block is, is where the resin was poured into the mould when it was cast, and it goes in this way, it's just poured in through an opening in the top of the mould, flows down into the component this way, and then it helps being pulled out afterwards as well. So this will need to be removed but it's actually quite a convenient thing to have them for the time being, because we can hold it whilst we clean the parts, because this is a very important thing about resin miniatures. Inside the mould what you'll often have is a release agent put into it before the resin, which helps the resin come back out once it's all set and ready to be removed. Now this can still be on some of the components, and it will stop paint from sticking to them, which means if you don't clean it off, Sometimes, no matter what you do, the paint won't stick to the part, even the spray primer, so it's a good idea to get into the habit of just giving them a quick clean first of all. It's very simple to do, all you need is some warm soapy water, which is what I've got just here, and then what you'll need is an old toothbrush like this one just here. Then all you do is give the parts a little scrub. Now you've got to be careful not to be too rough with it because you don't want to damage them, but it's just a matter of submerging them, just making sure they're you know, thoroughly coated with the water, then gently scrubbing to make sure you get rid of any of that agent. And once done this, all you've got to do is let it dry, then make sure it's completely dry before you move on. The parts are now completely dry, and so we can move on to the next step, which is going to be to clean them up, because if you look closely at these parts, there are some oddities in there that we'll want to remove. So for example, on the spear, things such as that part just there. And of course we've got these blocks that we need to take off as well. Now when it comes to these blocks what we need to do is be careful in removing them, because it's possible to try and cut too much at once, and it can cause some damage to the resin by shattering some of the components, so you just need to approach it carefully and essentially slowly cut away at it. So it takes a little bit of patience, but it's definitely worth it. Now to do this what I've got is a set of clippers, and you can see what they've got is a flat side on the blade and an angled side. What I want to try and do is get that blade as far away from the components as possible as I'm cutting through these rods. So for example with our piece just here, what I'm looking at doing is bringing them right down flat against the block, so that sort of area there to try and keep far away. Now it's just a matter of taking your time through this, so slowly start cutting into it like this to take it away. So there we go, that one's through, and then on this one again same thing, just cut part way through, and I'm almost gnawing my way through them, so very steady, all the way through there like that. And the last one, we just need to remove it again at the very bottom by snipping through there. So there we go. So now we just need to remove some of these rods. Now I don't want to cut all the way down to the foot because it might damage some of the resin there, so instead what I'm going to do is go a short distance away from it to around about there, so just take my time removing this resin there like that. Mm -hmm. 
With that, we've now removed the main part of the block, but you can see some of the resin still visible underneath the feet and at the butt of that spear just there too. So we need to remove those too. And for this, what we need is much more control. So this is where a craft knife is going to come in, like the one I've got just here. Now, if you're a youngster, you'll want an adult to do this part for you because of course the knife can be dangerous if not used correctly. And also you want to make sure you've got down something to protect your work surface here. So a cutting mat or something like that, that you can get from an art store. And what we're going to do with this is use the knife to gently remove the part that's left over. So we've got the body just here. You can see there's some resin underneath the feet. What we need to do is make sure the feet are braced against that cutting mat. So I'm going to turn it around this way to make sure they're right in contact with it. And then with the knife, what you need to do is very gently move in and just slice away the excess resin so you got right down to the flat of the foot. And there we are, the large blocks have been completely removed and you can see we've got a nice smooth surface where they were, which is especially important underneath the feet so it can fit nicely onto the base, but also at the butt of the spear, I've got rid of it there too. And so now we need to look at some other parts we need to remove because you can see right here, there's almost a rod and then a very thin bit of resin just beyond it. And on the body as well, there's some things like that too. You can see one just down underneath the tunic right down there. There's also one underneath the arm just here. Now this is gonna be in some cases intentional in some cases not. If it's a little rod, then what it is is a little hole inside the mold to allow the resin to flow around the component as it's flowing into the mold. And if there's a very thin bit next to it, then what this is is some resin that seeped out of the mold and got into that really narrow space in between the two halves of it. Now all this is generally called flash and all of it needs to be removed and doing so is very simple, but for it what you need once again is your knife. In the case of the spear, what we can do here is brace it on the mat so it's nice and stable here, so it's great for things like this so we don't damage the components at all. And what you need to do using your knife is essentially cut these parts away. So you just want to make sure you hold it down nice and steady and then using the blade to just gently cut this away. Now the rods, normally what you'll do is just pop through them like that. The thin parts sometimes will break away very easily on their own because they're so fragile, but it's still just a case of working your way around them gently until they come away. So for example, they're like that. Now on the part on the body, it's a little bit different because in that case, we can't put it down on the mat to brace ourselves as we're doing it. So in this case, you just have to be more careful. It's just a matter of making sure you hold it and well, using the knife, just carefully go in and start cutting it away. Now do be careful here, make sure the blade's facing away from you and take your time, but you just want to be as well careful as possible as you gently remove these details. With that, the flash has been removed. And so now the next thing to do is to take a look for mold lines on the miniature, because much like on plastic miniatures, what you'll get is a little sort of ridge almost where the two halves of the mold came together. Now, because the nature of the molds for resin kits, what you might find is this line varies depending on where exactly the actual mold line is. In the case of this one, because the mold's gonna be one piece towards the top of the miniature in this case, so around the shoulders, there really isn't much in the way of mold lines around there. So if we take a look, for example, you can see there isn't really one running across the top of it. But as we get further down to where the mold splits, you can see one start to happen because there's one going just down the edge of the cloak along there. There's also one visible on his foot just there. So we need to remove that. To do this, you can use a file or a knife. The choice really is yours. If you're going for a file, what you want to do is just very gently start rubbing it across the mold line like that to remove it. So gently work your way along it. On the other hand, if you want to use a knife, in this case, again, remember to be careful, but what you do, just angle the blade about 45 degrees from the flat of the component and just gently scrape it away like this. And with that, the parts are now cleaned up, but there's one more thing that we need to do before we glue things together, and that is on this spear just here, because if you take a look, it's not straight, and of course it needs to be. And this is just part of resin kits, because, well, the resin can deform as it's being cast, or when it's just in the packet, and basically what I mean by deform is parts can bend. Now this can happen with big or small parts, and fixing it is really, really simple, because all you've got to do is heat them up, then you can bend them back into shape. Now you can do this with a hairdryer if you want to, or like I've got here, just get some hot water. Now this is hot water, it's fresh out the kettle, so you've got to be careful not to burn yourself with it but all you do is just submerge the component into it and just give it a moment as it heats up and then it'll start to become flexible so that should be about long enough and let's have a look and there you go you can see now it's easy to bend it all you got to do is just bend it back being straight and let it cool down And there we are, the spear is now nice and straight, and so we're ready to start gluing the miniature together. When it comes to sticking together resin miniatures, you have to use super glue here. Don't use plastic glue at all because it causes a horrible mess. You've got to use super glue instead. And to actually stick it together, it's like assembling any miniature with super glue. All you've got to do is work out where the contact points are going to be and apply some glue to it. So, for example, on the feet here on the body, we're just looking at these areas down here underneath each foot. So, all you've got to do is get a little bit of your super glue and just very carefully apply small amounts onto each one. So, very gently, a little bit there and then a little bit there and then it's just a matter of lining it up on the base and holding the two parts together for a few seconds whilst the glue dries. 
And there we are, the model has now been fully built. And from this point on, what you do is just paint it as if you would any other miniature. So for example, be it plastic or metal, you do this in the exact same way. So still prime it with your primer undercoat and then paint your miniature with your regular paints. And if you want to, you can even varnish it at the end. The choice really is yours. So as you've seen, working with resin is actually very straightforward and not complex at all. But the key things to remember are to be careful when you're clipping excess bits away and cleaning it up because it's very easy to damage the resin by accident. And also if any parts are warped out of shape, remember if you heat them up, you can easily bend them them back to the position they're supposed to be. And this is true for small parts like we did here, even really big parts as well. As long as the vessel you put it in is big enough and the water's hot enough, even the hull of a Thunderhawk gunship can be straightened out if you need it to be. So have fun building your resin kits and we'll see you again very soon.